Fixation is central to my artistic practice. I isolate overlooked forms and reconstruct them at much larger scales. I allow viewers to inhabit the order of magnitude of each specimen. Three years ago, I started collecting dust bunnies from corners and stairwells wherever I went. I wanted to see if I could find beauty and order in even the most worthless, seemingly repulsive forms. And indeed, dust bunnies bear remarkable symmetry to the most complex and baffling systems, like the accretion of cosmic matter or the organization of memories in the brain. Within the system, I became fixated on another set of intricate structures, pollen. I studied these forms under the microscope and started developing a set of three-dimensional geometries, prototyping them with different technologies and at different scales. This is the first 3D print I made from that series. In this installation, a much larger grain of pollen stands alone under a container of honey that pours slowly from above to reveal the intricate geometries. Honey is a library of pollen. Bees collect massive amounts of species to store in their hive. So I decided to make my own archive of pollen. I studied as many different forms as I could, and I took it further to simulate the vast cosmos within a single spoonful of honey. I displayed this piece in a hexagonal room made of video walls so that the viewer could be trapped in a single cell of a honeycomb, suspended in high-energy matter. I continued to research geometries of density, compression, and confinement, and soon I was fixated on pomegranates. <laughs> pomegranates are nature's near-perfect example of sphere packing, hundreds of seeds packed together in as small a space as possible. I was fascinated by their jewel-like structures and equally intrigued by the cross-cultural narratives associated with these seeds. One story in particular really stuck with me, Homer's hymn to Demeter. Many of you may know this as the myth of Persephone. For those of you who don't know the story, I'll give you a brief synopsis. Demeter, the goddess of creation, cultivation, and growth, was out tending the land one day, and her beloved daughter, her most valuable creation, was abducted by Hades, the god of the underworld. Desperate for her daughter's return and obsessed with her search to find her, Demeter abandoned her work. The earth turned to dust, and death, destruction, and despair threatened humanity. The other gods intervened to return Demeter and Persephone. But those who eat the food of the underworld are condemned to remain there. And while imprisoned, Persephone had been tempted by the beauty of the pomegranate and had eaten six of its siren seeds. As punishment, she had to remain underground for six months of every year, one for each seed she had eaten. And this is one origin story of the seasons. The story was reenacted for hundreds of years as part of the Eleusinian Mysteries, the most important annual rite in ancient Greece, and one of the longest-standing feminine ceremonies in Western culture. So I decided that I wanted to create my own contemporary reenactment of the myth, and I wanted to use the pomegranate seeds as ritual objects to drive the narrative forward. So I went to my process and started studying the forms, making models, animations, videos, as many prototypes as I could in different materials and different scales. But I really needed these objects to be objects of fixation, irresistible, like the seeds in the story. So I decided they needed to be made out of glass, fragile and dangerous. I had never worked with glass, so I approached a well-known glass studio owned by dear friends, and they kindly offered to help me fabricate the seeds. We began our collaboration soon after, and the process was mesmerizing. It was like watching a macro time-lapse of a pomegranate seed actually growing. You could see the sphere expanding until it pressed against the walls of its neighbors to achieve its dodecahedral facets. 
When the seeds were complete, they were truly objects of fixation. So I started playing with different ritual behaviors and actions. I wanted to show their vulnerability, how fragile they were. So I started making videos to simulate the destruction of the seeds, what would happen if they shattered or exploded like grenades. And at this point in my process, I got a call from the glass studio. They were upset. <laughs> but not because I was destroying the seeds in virtual space. They were upset because they had discovered that one of their assistants had been secretly making unauthorized copies of my pomegranate seeds <laughs> <laughs> and showing and selling them under his name. I was shocked and distraught by this unexpected infringement. <sighs> so, after repeated conversations, very unproductive conversations with this assistant, I realized that he was intent on claiming my work as his own. So I reluctantly contacted the sites and galleries that were showing his copies, and they swiftly and apologetically took them down. But every few weeks, the seeds would pop up somewhere else, <laughs> on Pinterest and Etsy and other boutique stores and galleries. I joked that I was playing intellectual property whack-a-mole. <laughs> I had started neglecting my own creative practice in favor of legal disputes and cease and desist letters. I was Demeter, obsessed. I had been looking for a narrative, and it slapped me in the face. I was reenacting the age-old story of a man claiming a woman's creation as his own. And at this point, I realized that the myth had fulfilled itself. Well, almost. I still needed to reenact the reunion of Demeter and Persephone, the reconnecting of women across generations. And so I looked to the women in my own life for inspiration. Fortunately, six generations of women in my family have kept immaculate records of their stories, collecting an archive of thousands of photographs and documents. And so I spent several months scanning all of the artifacts in the collection and learning the intimate stories of the matriarchs in my family. I reconnected with a famous opera star of the Paris Opera, a famous portrait photographer who won many awards, a race car driver who could dismantle and repair her own engines an Olympic skier, and resistance fighters in World War II who risked their lives to hide the leader of the French underground. Really amazing women. All of them single, powerful mothers. And so I decided to make an addition of books to celebrate their achievements. And I also made a digital archive of all of their stories and photographs to share with future generations. My most valuable fixation has been my family and the strong women who created it. Historically, women have been overlooked, but when considered closely, their lives are rich microcosms of narrative, filled with drama, comedy, wisdom, and endless inspiration. Thank you.